machine, huh? Ooh machine? Ooh Remy machine? Okay, this this is their machine, which means this is their car. It's a tour they made uh, just out of a, a bucket top made out of plastic. Isn't that something? And and this is made out of a a palm palm a palm tree branch. Isn't that something? Okay, hey, let's go. Vinny, 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 Vinny. Okay, T Moon. Okay, okay, T Moon. Okay, T Moon. Ali, Ali, Ali. Come, Ali. Look at them go. Look at them go. Look at them go. You know, this village here is dry and dusty and uh, can't grow hardly no crops at all. Matter of fact, can't grow anything that I know of. Whoa, they're coming back. Children, you know, Sure and I, we lived here for 23 years now. And the reason we moved here, really the children, they stole, they stole our hearts. And you look around this village, this is just the culture. This is the culture of Haiti. This is where they probably 95% of the people live. They call them kai pies, they're made out of stick and palm, palm branches and palm fans on a tree. But you look all through there. And this is how they live, and this is how the children live. But on, you know, when you see our TV programs, you see the children, we may show some children. Well, matter of fact, not, well, just like eight months ago, we, we showed a child who lived right here in this particular village by the name of Nelson. And I know you know him, but some of you have seen other children on our TV program, but. Have you ever wondered what's happened to those children after we showed them on television? Of course, they were in poverty, despair. Uh, of course, their main problem, uh, they, have, they had no food to eat. Some was eating um, dirt, goat feces. But have you ever wondered what's happened to some of these children. Do we just take them for television and let them go? No. Everybody we've ever showed on television, you and I together, we have made a difference because love is something that you do. And on this special TV program today, Sherry and I, we're gonna share with you four stories stories of children that you've seen on TV that was in total despair and poverty. But you know, what's happened to them afterwards? The story is going to end up good because with your help and all of us working together, love is something that you do. So well, let's go right now to the first story of a child. And let's just see what, what the Lord has done. Let's just see what God is doing through love. God bless you. So small, he is like a skeleton with skin on it. Arms are no bigger round than a quarter. You can see every bone. And that second child still should be breastfed, but now the mother, her health may not be good. She's interested in breastfeeding that first baby. And meanwhile, the second one, he's not old enough to go work in the field with his father. And he is between the first child and the older children who can survive. They call that section of children the little survivors if they live to be five years old. And without help, these children will never see their full birthday.
When there's no food, of course, there's no hope. Parents will do anything, go anywhere to feed their children. Listen to the cry of the poor today. Every one of us can do something. Sherry and I can't do everything, but we can do something. And with your help, we can make a difference. Your gift and your help will save lives here in Haiti. I found him today, he was chewing on a spoon. He was sitting on the ground right beside the pigs and he was eating dirt. I can describe him to you, but unless you hold a child like this in your arms or unless you live here in Haiti, you would never understand the poverty that these children feel and the hunger that they feel. His little ribs are sticking out, his belly is bloated, his little arms are so tiny, his hair is crusted and nasty, he's completely naked, He's got an infection, but most of all, he's hungry. He needs to go to the malnutrition clinic over there is where he needs to go. We oui, doctor. Mama needs to eat. He only eats dirt. He only eats dirt. He needs a sponsor. In just three weeks time, this little boy who had been in a prison of hunger and despair and misery completely started to change. In just three weeks time, we saw him begin to stand up, to walk, to ride a tricycle, to begin to talk. To laugh, to play. Oh, what an amazing difference. What a miracle change in the life of this little boy who had been bound up in this prison of pain and agony for four solid years until you came by to rescue him. His, his night has been changed in the daytime. He runs, he plays, he laughs. And now he is going to school. Thank you for saving another life. Never had a little girl in my whole life in Haiti that has affected me as much as this child has affected me. I'll never forget the first time Bobby and I saw Miliana. My heart and Bobby's heart broke into a million pieces. We never seen a little girl in such a horrible condition, full of sores, just a horrible condition. But it was that inner spirit of hers that had been crumbled and crushed and, and just beaten to death. Just pathetic little eyes, hopeless, lifeless. You know what it feels like to have lost your hope? To be, imagine being a child and losing all your hope and feeling that nobody loves you, that you're abandoned, that you're a piece of trash, that you're thrown away. And on top of all that, not having any food. 
being hungry 24-7. Bobby and I thought that she was going to die. So Bobby and I, we put her in our car. We took her back to our orphanage with her mother's permission. Thank you. You know, because of you, our partners, us working together, it has changed the life of little Miliana forever. And now because of your love and because she's receiving food, three hot meals every day. And now she's going to school. She's been going to school since we retook her. And she's been going to school and now she's learning English. And of course we sent her to America to have her skin, she had a very bad skin condition. And she's still fighting it, but we sent her to America for special doctors over there. Love has made a difference. Food has made a difference with compassion. God bless you. Haiti is the poorest country in the world. Everyday children are hungry and starving, which in many cases leads to death. These children have no hope. They have no desire for school, no strength to play, and no aspirations of a better future. You can help them change their situation by providing food because food brings hope. Will you get involved today? For your gift of $24, you will provide 648 meals of well-balanced, nutritionally rich, great-tasting food. This will help feed three families for an entire month. Yes, for just $24, less than the average restaurant meal for your family, you will be feeding three families for an entire month. Your gift of $120 provides 3,240 meals. Your one-time or monthly gift of $120 will feed 15 families for a month. And your generous gift of $1,000, which provides 27,000 meals, will feed an entire impoverished Haitian village. Please consider Haiti's hungry children today by calling the number on your screen, visiting our website, or sending in your gift today. We cannot do everything, but together we can do something. On behalf of the hungry children of Haiti, thank you and may God richly bless you. Send Max send down to uh, our clinic in Palm Parisian uh, to Dr. Marty, and uh, they can uh, to put him in a program there for malnutrition, or they may send him to another hospital that they will keep him in the hospital. Six years old. That baby is six years old. He looks like he's two. That's what severe malnutrition does. You know, when we brought him down, to take care of him, I never realized how quickly Mackinson could recover with having three meals a day and plenty of love. In just a short period of time, little Mackinson's face filled out. He had lost some of his baby teeth and he had that cute little grin <laughs> that no one could turn away. He's full of love, he's happy, going to school, receiving a good education, and I might add, made second place in his class at school. And he is going to be something one day. If we had left him there in the mountains, Mackinson would not be alive today. He would have died of hunger. Well, may God bless you. I want to share a story with you today on this ministry segment. And it's about little Nelson, whom you heard and seen in the beginning of the program, who now lives in our orphan's home where Sherry and I live. 
Well, this morning I was out, out and, 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 I, and I carport. And I looked up and I, at our house, we got you know some steps coming down, the little stairs there coming down. And I looked up and I seen, seen little Nelson. He was running with his hands wide open, his arms, at the top of his voice saying, Poppy, Poppy, Poppy. He was so glad to see me. And I looked at him and I, and I said to myself, he's not gonna stop with those steps. He wants to jump in my arms and I'm too far away. So I, I ran real close, uh, up closer, but I couldn't get close enough before I got to the, what I felt was safe. And all of a sudden, he just took a leap. And I had my arms up like that and little Nelson jumped right into my arms. And you know what? He grabbed me, the poppy, poppy, and then he hugged me so tight. But the thought for the day from the Word of God is Mark 11, 22. The Bible says, now have faith in God. You know, God is our Heavenly Father. Just like little Nelson, he jumped. He jumped over all those stairs going down, and he jumped right into my arms. That was a leap of faith. Really, he scared me so bad. Wow, if I wasn't there, it would have been broken all, all up, no doubt about it. But he jumped in my arms. He trusted his papa. He trusted his father. Today, have faith in God. You're in the arms of God. He will not fail you. The day in the program, you, the Lord may lead you something to do financially or prayerfully. Well, today, take the leap of faith and bless the poor. Do something for God. Take the leap of faith. Your Heavenly Father will bless you and hold you in His arms and He will reward you. Just like little Nelson, he jumped in my arms. He took the leap of faith. God bless you. All the way from the mission field, here where Sherry and I live now for 23 years. I love you. God bless you. When there's no food, of course, there's no hope. <laughs> Parents will do anything, go anywhere to feed their children. Listen to the cry of the poor today. Every one of us can do something. Sherry and I can't do everything, but we can do something. And with your help, we can make a difference. Your gift and your help will save lives here in Haiti. We met this little boy Jackson who just took right to Madame Sherry. He just uh, was loved by her and, and he has followed her along. You know, he, he just wanted to live with her right away. At a seven year old, he just knew that she could help him. His belly was just, he looked pregnant, like a little boy pregnant. That's exactly what he looked like. And he's just miserable. He was sitting on the ground and um, I helped him up and he was grunting because it was hurting him so bad. It's not fair for a child to suffer like this. And he's hungry. He's always hungry, always wants to eat, but his stomach is so distended. So in Kwashiorkor, children retain a lot of fluid. It comes from mostly not eating the right kind of food. He is eating food, but let's say he's eating um, flour with water or just cornmeal. 
those types of things. And not any protein. So as a result, his feet are swelling, his eyes are swelling, his face is swollen, he has a big belly, and it's going to take a long time for this belly to go down. But he is in total, total misery, agonizing misery. He, he wants crying. to go home with he us wants today. To go home with us today. So he, he, he just told us he wants to get out of this misery. You know, Bobby and I have lived in Haiti for 23 years. In 23 years, I had never, ever seen a little boy whose stomach was so swollen with Quashicor malnutrition as Jackson's was. I could only describe him as looking like a little boy that was nine months pregnant. It was so difficult for him to walk and sit, and he was not happy. He had been eating a protein-deficient diet since he was born. Nothing but cornmeal, and flour with water. Can you imagine? But now, after one month of him eating three meals a day, three good meals, this little boy, his whole personality has changed. He is no longer solemn and sulky. He is happy, laughing, telling jokes, going to school, working hard, and he wants to be something great when he grows up. This little boy's life has gone from darkness to daylight simply because somebody like you cared enough to feed another hungry child. Thank you. It's always so good to hear the stories of what has happened to children whose lives that we have saved together. Every child is precious to us. You know, but sadly enough, there comes a time when we cannot reach all of the children in time. And I remember one of my first trips to Haiti. I couldn't speak Creole very well. And we had gone to an island off the coast of Haiti by the name of Lagunav. We were actually there to do a medical clinic. I'd heard about hungry, starving children, but I'd never really seen a child die from eating things like mud and rocks. And as we came over on one of those old floppy wooden boats, I remember coming to the shore and all of a sudden somebody started screaming and crying, come quickly, come quickly, a child is dying. So we got out of the boat and walked up the little path and made our way to this little tiny mud hut. There underneath this, this little tree that was near the mud hut, a woman sat crying and weeping and clutching her son. By this time, her son was dead. His face was bloated, his belly was bloated. And I remember asking someone, what happened to him? Why did he die? His mother looked at me with tears in his eyes and she said, my son died because every time I would go to try to look for work, he would sit on the floor of our hut and he would eat mud. And the people told me that if he keeps on eating mud, he's going to die. And when I came today, I saw that my son was sick and now my son is dead. And she started wailing and crying as the men of the village came and tried to pry this dead child out of her arms. The next morning early, I heard the sounds of a hammer and a nail, and I knew that someone was building a coffin for this child. And I looked out of the hut where we were staying, and I saw this father with this coffin walking through the village and singing a song. And I asked somebody about the song that he was singing, and he said, he's singing a song that says, my child will never be hungry again. You know, that story made an impact on the life of Bobby and I. It's not fair that a parent should bury the child first. It's certainly not fair that a child should die from hunger, from eating things like dirt and rocks. You know, it's so easy sometimes to pass by on the other side and not want to see the hungry children, not want to hear the cry of the poor, 
But today the Lord is saying to us, do nothing and they will die. Today is the day when the Lord is speaking to your heart to say, yes, I want to help save another child. And we have a way that you can do it. There's so many ways that you can be involved in helping us feed the children. You can help. You know, on our television programs, we always show you long lines of people and us feeding the masses of people, you and I together, many, many hundreds and hundreds of people. But on this program, we're trying to show you we can help one child yes. at a time. Yes. We can save one life at a time. Here's how you and I can do it together. Sure and I, we live here in Haiti. We can be God's hands and feet and your hands and feet. Yes. Be showing the love. For a gift of $24, we'll supply 648 meals. For a gift of $120, we'll supply 3,240 meals. For a gift of $500, we'll supply 13,500 meals. For a gift of $1,000, we'll supply 27,000 meals. For a gift of $10,000, you can supply an entire 40-foot container of food for 200, actually 200, we always say 270,000, but it's actually 272,000. Please call, please make a difference. Call the toll-free number that's on the screen right now. Call and will speed up your process, or you may give online through your computer. Yes. It is secured, and it would speed the process up. Or you may say, I'm gonna give a certain amount each month by automatic donation from the computer. Go online, they will show you how. Or you may write our mailing address. Now, whenever you give, sure and I, we're gonna send you back a special letter, and we're gonna thank you and you're going to receive a picture. And it can be something personal from Sherry and I. But please, call the toll-free number. Let God use you. May God bless you. All the way from Haiti, where Sherry and I live as full-time missionaries. God bless you on the behalf of the children.